Hi everyone and welcome to the ProBuilder 2.0 modeling tutorial. So in the background right now we have going on, uh, I'm just building up uh, in a time lapse there of course, uh, not real time obviously, just putting together a quick little level that we can use to demo the modeling features in ProBuilder. And as you can hopefully see there, it's really simple, fast and easy to put something together. Um, obviously uh, one of the best uses for ProBuilder is just uh, plain rapid prototyping so you can put this together and have a uh, you know a character and enemies or whatnot running around on this with no trouble at all uh, very very simple to put together um, so with that put together then let's go ahead and take a look at how we can edit some of these uh, items and start making our, our own level out of this or editing it anyway so to start with to do any kind of editing on a pro builder object um, you simply need to select the object, or even none at all actually. Uh, unlike ProBuilder1.x, you can now simply uh, jump right into the editing mode. All you have to do is hit the G key on your keyboard, and you're now in the geometry editing mode. So if you look in the top left or, or wherever your ProBuilder window is, you'll notice that it either shows the vertex editing mode, or if you hit H on your keyboard, you can toggle into the uh, face editing mode. So this is the different types of geometry editing uh, that you can do. So again, just H to toggle between those two. When we're in the vertex editing mode, if you click on a face, it will automatically select all the vertices for that face, no matter which item you click on. And you'll notice that any uh, unselected vertices will be colored blue and any selected vertices are colored a, a brighter, uh, more opaque, bright green color. You can also drag select to grab multiple vertices, just like so. Now in the face mode, it's simply click to select, and it selects the entire face. You can hold shift to select multiple faces if you like, and that's the same in the vertex edit mode. So I can hold shift and select more and shift and drag select more as well. Just like so. If you need to undo a selection, use shift as well or to, you know, remove a, uh, a portion so I can drag select and remove that portion and the same for this. And once again the same holds true when you're in face mode. I can hold shift and select multiple items and then use shift to deselect certain items as well. So now that we have a face selected, we can go ahead and edit it. Let's say we want to move up uh, this, this area right here, just these parts. So I just select it, maybe grab this other one as well, and use the Unity handles to move it straight up. Nothing to it at all. Let's bring those down so they make more sense. Maybe we want to add in another uh, ramp over here on the side to walk up the side here. If I, uh, I could just duplicate one of these objects and bring it around, but let's start by creating our own brand new cube. So you can hit Control K, and that will spawn in a cube, just a regular simple Pro Builder object. And you can position this just as you would anything else. Also, you'll notice that I'm using the ProGrid snapping tool, and this is something you'll definitely want to use, even if you're just using the free version, um, which you can get on the 6x7studio.com slash ProGrid's website. Uh, this is another tool that I've made that really, uh, really works well, to pro, well with ProBuilder and anything else in Unity. It gives you a full, proper snapping. Uh, as you can see in the isometric views, it shows the grids and such. And you can control the size, even the units type, and various things like that. So you'll definitely want to pick up at least a free version of that so you can snap things real easily together. Um, it's kind of something that's lacking in Unity, but this uh, picks it up. So anyway, we can create that cube, and I'm going to start editing it. So I'll bring that face out there. Bring this out. I'm going to keep it the same as these other ramps, about 3 by 3 And then I'm going to go into the vertex editing mode by hitting H. And I'll make this an actual ramp. Just like so. And there we have it. So pretty simple. 
nothing to that at all. Uh, of course, if this were uh, a real game, you might want to extend this out some more so that the player could actually move up that. Uh, generally, no more than 45 degrees is a good idea. So anyway, very simple to edit that. Now, one thing we can do here is if we want to add some more complex geometry, you have the shape creation panel. Well, this is one way of doing it anyway. And you have a couple options here, and we're definitely going to be adding a, a lot more in the future. Number one in this case, let's say we wanted to create a stairway. So select the stair option, and you can choose the number of steps, the width in meters, height in meters, and depth in meters. And I always recommend um, the, to use, let's say, uh, well, Unity works, and these are, are in, of course, the, the meter unit, and if you're working at a grid level of 0.25, that's one quarter of a uh, one quarter of a meter. So you want to use always four times whatever your height is for the number of steps, or else you run into some snapping issues if you need to edit that staircase later. So anyway, if we have a height of three, which this is, as you can see by looking at the standard um, or the default Pro Builder texture, it's one, two, three meters high right there. So I'll say three. I'll keep the same depth of 3, and I'll actually give this an exact width of 3, and 3 times 4 is 12. So, uh, you have a couple options here, platforms only, extend sides to floor and generate back. I'll just turn these two on and then click build stairs. So now we have a stairway that's 3 by 3 by 3. I can just rotate this around, get it set up, and drop it in. So now, instead of this ramp, I now have a fairly fancy staircase that I can add in just like so. So stairs are a really nice and easy way to add some detail to your levels. Um, one thing with this, make sure you take a look at the Zones and Triggers tutorial later on, which will show you how to make a special custom uh, collision mesh for this stairway. And it will work just as it is. Um, you'll be able to run up it, of course, but you'll have that bumpy feeling that at least I usually don't really like in games. Uh, it isn't as efficient as it could be. So again, take a look at the Zones and Collisions tutorial that we'll have later on. So that's the staircase. You can also create a cylinder. Say we want this to be a little more smoothed and have a few more height cuts. If I click Build Cylinder, there we have it. And this is probably way too big to put anywhere in our level. That's fine. It might even fit right up here as if it had some importance. So cylinders can be handy for a lot of things, um, depending on what you're building. And once again, we're adding lots and lots to the shape menu as we keep on going. The last item in the shape menu here is the plane. Once again, you can Oops, let's select that. There we go. Once again, you can set uh, a couple parameters here as well as the normal axis that it has. We'll just build it as it is. And this creates a plane that we can edit, just like so. So you can use this for creating more organic geometry. Um, just do a little more with we are definitely planning on having a method of painting these verts up and down, uh, even doing uh, vertex painting and material blending. So there should be some really cool things coming together with the plane. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, as you'll see by the warning here in the tool area, there's some issues with light mapping on the plane that we've got to get around. So if you can leave that um, <laughs> with uh, dynamic lighting for the moment, um, you'll just uh, not be able to light map it these uh, only in the planes. Everything else light maps automatically, of course. So I'll just delete that so it's not in the way. And that's really it for modeling in ProBuilder. Obviously, those are just the absolute basics. And that's it. So thanks for taking a look and see you in the next one.